Tonight, we take an in-depth look at the shift on the school board and its impact on the community. I smell marijuana now. That's why I'm in your car. Uh, that's not okay. Hey, right. back up. Get, get out of my face. Get out of my back. Denver police left with a lawsuit over this rough arrest. Why this man says he was targeted because of the color of his skin. And the masks come off in Denver. But one doctor warns loosening restrictions could mean a slower end to this pandemic. Well, right now, the Douglas County School Board is meeting to discuss the future of Superintendent Corey Wise. And the meeting comes after the conservative majority reportedly held a closed door meeting with the superintendent requesting he resign or risk being fired. And their reasoning, they claim they aren't happy with the direction of the district. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is joining us live tonight. Russell, there is some anxiety and fear among parents about what could come next. Yeah, and there's really been a lot of tension throughout the school year here in Douglas County. At the beginning of the year, it was all about masks, and that led to the county forming its own health department, and it also led to sweeping changes on the school board. Tonight, it's all about secret meetings and the superintendent's future. On the heels of yesterday's huge rally outside district headquarters, mounting anxiety among some parents about what the board will do tonight. I, I'm scared. Chad Cox has four kids, including a second grader who requires unique attention from his teachers. He's been diagnosed with phonologic dyslexia. They, they are working day and night, 15 hours a day, just to be able to teach my child to read, do math, understand a respectful sense of history. At issue tonight, whether the board will vote to terminate Superintendent Corey Wise after the board majority allegedly held behind the scenes meetings discussing his termination. Corey is an, a phenomenal leader. Stephanie Brink has three kids and points out Douglas County's history of reformer school boards. Starting in 2009 mm -hmm. to 2017, um, at that time we had a lot of outside money uh, coming in uh, from outside interests. That was when politics started to become part of it. Former school board candidate Julie Watkins believes that was a dark era, a move toward privatizing a public school district, driving good teachers away. And they were all put on a pay for performance pay scale. And I know the morale was extremely low. The fear among some parents is that Douglas County is now moving back in that direction. I'm seeing the same types of things that we saw back then, right? A, a very sudden lack of transparency. What I don't like to see is politics in our schools. So here we go, this rare Friday night school board meeting underway here in Douglas County. It's expected to last up to three hours, maybe even longer. We hope to have updates for you tonight on Denver 7 at 10. For now, we're live in Castle Rock, Russell Haythorn. Denver 7. All right, we will be on top of it all night. Russell, thank you. And tonight we're taking a look back at the 2021 November election and this school board race. This was an off year election and only 118,000 voters in Douglas County cast a ballot for the school board race. There are about 280,000 eligible voters, so that's only a 40% voter turnout. And tonight we're also taking a look at how school boards became so motivated by politics. We'll have that for you tonight at 6. And for those who are already thinking about a potential recall for these new school board members, you would not be able to take any action yet. So let's take a closer look at the procedural rules. Elected officials can only be the subject of a recall after holding office for at least six months. These new board members were sworn in at the end of November and in order for a recall petition to be successful for a school district leader, it must be signed by eligible electors within the school district equal to at least 40% of ballots cast for that race. And right now we do have a team at the Douglas County School Board meeting. We will have live coverage all night long, both on air online and on the free Denver 7 Plus app for your streaming device. A Colorado man says he was racially profiled and targeted when he was arrested during a minor traffic crash in 2020, and he is now suing Denver police and the city. Denver 7's Micah Smith has a look at the body cam video, and she spoke with one expert who says there was a better way to de-escalate the situation. On April 27, 2020, 25-year-old Keelon Hill says he was driving on I-25 when he got into a minor crash with a pickup truck and it kind of like just sideswiped me. Hill called 911 and EMS arrived shortly after. This body camera footage shows while paramedics checked Hill for injuries, a Denver police officer questioned the other driver. After I was in the lane, he came in between me and the car that was 
was in the lane. Hill's attorney, Benjamin Degolius, says this video shows the officer believed the other driver. He tries to thread the needle between two lanes, dude, and he side swipes, and yeah. he's being a I haven't talked to him yet because uh, fire was all around him, but I haven't got his ID yet. He looks like a turd. As Hill leaves the ambulance, he sees another officer searching his car. Get out of my face. The Denver Police Department has a racial bias problem. Hill and DeGolia say officers didn't have a warrant to search his car, and that search, plus the arrest, violated Hill's constitutional rights. It's not like I uh, charged him. It's not like I uh, was cursing at him. I wasn't screaming at him. I literally asked him, why are you in my car? We showed this footage to Metropolitan State University criminal justice professor Stacy Hervey for an objective interpretation. When I watched the full video, um, obviously the officers talked to the people in the black truck first. So I think the perception in the police officer's mind was that this person was already aggressive. Herbie says with that in mind, the officer probably perceived Hill's walk toward him as aggressive. I don't know if the officers or the paramedic did anything wrong per se, um, but it seems like it could have been de-escalated um, by all parties. But Golia and Hill say de-escalation was the officer's responsibility. The officers arrested Mr. Hill because he was criticizing their conduct. Hill spent 24 hours in jail and was charged with interference with police activity. The charge was later dismissed, but Hill says he is suing the city. Hill has not specified how much money he's seeking, but says right now he wants justice and he wants the officers involved in his arrest to be disciplined. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Denver police say they can't comment because of the pending litigation. More than three months since flames engulfed the Whittier Place condos off Pearl Street in Boulder, fire investigators say they determined that the origin of the fire was on the exterior of the building, but they can't pinpoint an exact cause. Crews couldn't find any source of ignition on the outside. Dozens of people were displaced from that 83-unit complex, and investigators say the fire sprinkler inside the building did work properly when the flames started to spread. Today is the first day officially you can drop your mask in a lot of indoor places in Denver. The city and county let their mask requirement expire. Individual businesses can still require you to wear a face covering or provide proof of vaccination. In fact, Ball Arena and Denver Center for the Performing Arts will be among those. Several other metro counties are taking the same approach, including Broomfield, Adams and Arapahoe. And mask requirements there also expired today. We spoke to a local epidemiologist who cautioned, though, what could happen by removing too many of these restrictions. Instead of this up and down, like coming up and going down this way, it's going up and now we're turning the corner and coming down instead of this going, it's gonna go a little plateau off like this and maybe slowly go down if we take off all the restraints, right? And we don't do the practices that we, sit, we know works. Dr. Zhu also says by ditching all the restrictions, we run the risk of slowing down the opportunity to normalize the virus. Children's Museum in Denver will reopen the gas tomorrow. As you might know, it closed to the public because people were taking out their anger over mask requirements on staff there. Even though the city and county of Denver's mask mandate expired, the museum says it will keep a mask requirement in place for those three and older. The museum says it knows the last two years have been challenging, but reminds guests respect the policy and be supportive of the staff. As I live each day, they feel very long <laughs> and very hard to get through. Coloradans who vanished and have never been found still leaving families with more questions and answers. The daily stuff, you know, it just is very lonely. Today on Missing Persons Day, a Colorado mother says even nine years after her daughter disappeared, the pain is still so raw. Temperatures not quite as cold here for the metro area as we head through the rest of tonight. A nice little warm up on the way. I'll let you know when our next cold front arrives. And Jeff Bezos is bringing a new era of space exploration right to Colorado.